Hi guys, I'm Dr. Munsi. In this video, I'll discuss some important MCQs and related important topics. Let's start. What will define it? Ratio of number of death under one year of age to total life birth per 1000 life birth per year. Just read very carefully the questions again. What we will define ratio of number of death under one year of age to total live birth per 1000 live birth per year. Option A is infant mortality rate, option B is child mortality rate, and C child morbidity rate, and D is life expectancy rate. So you have to very carefully read the un uh, whole questions and all the MCQs, all the options. Then you have to proceed to the answer. Answer of this question is option A infant mortality rate. Infant mortality rate includes early, late and post neonatal deaths as for example from birth to one year of life. Randomized clinical trials are conducted in, in which phase? Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, Phase 4. So if you want to answer these questions you have to know about the phase, phases of clinical trials then only you can answer it in this question the answer is C option C that is phase 3 so in phase 3 randomized clinical trials are conducted so what are the phases in phase 1 there is human pharmacology and safety human pharmacology and safety researchers test an experimental drug or treatment in a small group of people 20 to 80 for the first time to evaluate its safety determine safe dose and identify side effects so it's experimental thing and uh, they give treatment to a very small group of people 20 to 80 so it's phase 1 and evaluate safety, determine safe dose and identify side effects. Now what's phase 2? That is therapeutic exploration and dose ranging. The experimental study drug or treatment is given to a larger group of people. In phase 1 it's 20 to 80 and in phase 2 it's 100 to 300 to see if it is effective and to further evaluate its safety. In phase 3 trials, it is th for therapeutic confirmation or comparison. The experimental study drug or treatment is given to large groups of people 1000 to 300 to confirm its effectiveness, monitor side effects, compare it with commonly used treatments and collect information that will allow the drug or treatment to be used safely this is actual classical stage of clinical trial which is also known as randomized clinical trial in phase 4 trials there is post marketing surveillance of studies post marketing studies delineate additional information including the drugs risk benefits and optimal use so you have to have thorough knowledge about the phases if you want to answer this type of questions Next question, a patient with Helicobacter pylori infection is treated with drugs. The best method to detect presence of a residual H. pylori infection in, the, in this person is So you have to uh, read the question very carefully that H. pylori infection is already treated with drugs. So if you want to detect any presence of a residual H. pylori infection, what will be the best test, best method? Bacteria culture of stool, urea breath test, gastric acid test, all of the above. So in case of a fresh H. pylori infection diagnosis, endoscopy is the gold standard technique. 
but in case of presence of a residual spelled infection detection best non invasive method is urea breath test option b you can't do every time endoscopy for uh, detecting h pylori is present or not so it's a non invasive technique the best, best method among the options urea breath test the drugs which can cause the osteonecrosis of the jaw corticosteroids calcitonin alendronate so for answering these questions you have to know which drug which group of drugs is uh, that the calcitonin corticosteroids and alendronate alendronate is bisphosphonate drugs we know that bisphosphonate drugs is associated with osteo necrosis so the answer is alendronate because it is bisphosphonate group of drug which of the following factor facilitates the aggregation of platelets to exposed collagen surface von willebrand factor factor 7 factor 9 and fibronectin so which factor facilitates the aggregation of platelets to exposed collagen surface the answer is von willebrand factor which of the following is important for wound healing selenium magnesium calcium copper so you have to answer this question the elimination process selenium you can eliminate it but magnesium it is important for wound healing calcium it is also important copper it is also important so among b c and d you have to choose the best answer in this question the best option is copper it is more important than magnesium and calcium so copper is the answer if zinc will be there in this options zinc will be the best answer but zinc is not there so copper is the answer in this question a dentist going to restore class 2 cavity of mandibular posterior teeth with proximal boss box wide buccolingually which ways you will use around cervical margin pardon me for the typing mistake and not arranging the questions proper so this this is a particular question is very important because you have to have knowledge about the wedging single wedging wedge wedging double wedging then only you can answer it so here the key point is the proximal box is wide buccolingually so in case of wide buccolingual proximal box you have to use double wedging so let's discuss what is single wedging what is double wedging and wedge wedging so in case of proximal box wide buccolingually you have to use double wedging now it is double wedging you can see from the picture the two ways is used one is buccally one is lingually the so double wedging is permitted securing the matrix when the proximal box is wide facial lingually so for facial lingual wide proximal box you you have to use double wedging one from buccal one from palatal lingual wedge wedging you can see from the picture two ways is used one is from lingual and other is from the occlusal so it is used in maxillary surface in first premolar because there is a mesial concavity present in the first premolar so in this case you have to use two ways where is the matrix band tight against the tooth because of the mesial concavity it is also mcq questions that why ways wedging technique is needed for the first premolar maxillary first premolar because there is a presence of mesial concavity so for that you have to use ways wedging a second ways is inserted between the first and band piggy back wedging there is a two ways is used one is large one is small ways 
useful in cases of gingival recession of interproximal tissue in case of recession of gingiva of interproximal tissue you need two ways one after another one is small when uh, one is big to cover up the uh, wide space actually fill the space and place the matrix band against the margin The following antifungal is commonly used in immunocompromised patients for invasive and systemic infections. So in case of immunocompromised patient and for uh, invasive and systemic infections you have to use amphotericin B. Higher index of vertical root fractures are seen in Options are maxillary premolar, mandibular second molar, mandibular premolars, and maxillary first molars. Answer is mandibular second molar is more prone to vertical fractures. Mandibular second molars. A maximum broad coverage of danger bearing area provides real effect, snowshoe effect, stability, occlusal clearance. So maximum broad coverage of denture bearing area provides snowshoe effect. If you increase the coverage area of RPD, it will increase support. It will distribute the load evenly. So this effect is called snowshoe effect because you can understand from the picture that the basic snowshoe principle of maximal extension, extension is applied for support. It states that given a constant occlusal force, a broader denture bearing area decreases the stress under the denture base. So if you use a broad shoe in snowy region, it will give you more support and will not fall. N butyl cyanoacrylate is used for it's a new question. N butyl cyanoacrylate is used for hemostasis, skin apposition, disinfection, tissue regeneration. N butyl cyanoacrylate is actually used for the apposition of skin. It's a glue type of thing. It's, its main use is skin apposition, sutureless. It's a substitute of suture. This slide is very important, though it's not clear. I'm reading out. Please listen to this uh, slide because the information is new to uh, most of most of you. Two products are currently available on the market: Derma Bond by Ethicon and Octyl 2 cyanoacrylate and Indermil TM by US Surgical and N butyl cyanoacrylate. Both of these adhesive are used for traumatic or surgical skin closure in low tension wounds. Cyanoacrylate glue is supplied in liquid monomer form. Polymerization and tissue bonding occur when the glue encounters ions associated with moisture on the surface of the skin and wound edge cyanoacrylate glue will bond to the skin cells and will slog as those cells die and are replaced advantage of cyanoacrylate glue include increased speed of wound closure abrogation of the need for suture removal and reduced patient cost compared to sutures Cyanoacrylate glue form an occlusive seal over a wound and that is establish a barrier to microbial penetration and have antibacterial effect. This is a this is a glue, this is a substitute for suture. You don't have to suture it. You have to glue it and it will also have antibacterial effects. I don't know the cost. 
but it's beneficial next paroxysmal lacrimation occurs during mastication due to injury to auriculotemporal nerve facial nerve trigeminal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve paroxysmal lacrimation it's a is also called fray syndrome so it's due to injury of auriculotemporal nerve so what is fray syndrome or paroxysmal lacrimation it's a phenomena seen after parotid surgery where the patient develops sweating on the side of the face while eating what is the cause of it because when you are uh, transecting the parotid or you have done parotidectomy and due to transection of cholinergic secretomotor fibers to the secretory units to the parotid gland you are uh, removing the parotid gland that means you are also transecting the cholina cholinergic secretomotor fiber also that means auriculotemporal nerves uh, secretomotor fiber and which subsequently sprout new axons when parotid gland is not there there will be a regeneration of new axons but direction is wrong it is in the wrong direction and it will innervate sweat glands in the skin flap because there is no parotid gland so it will innervate the sweat glands of the skin flap which are also responsive to acetylcholine so whenever you are eating it will falsely stimulate the sweat gland and it will cause sweating or flushing around 10% of patients who undergo parotidectomy will complain of gastritis sweating you can see from the picture in the first diagram it is showing the nerve supply to the parotid gland in the second second picture there is no parotid gland and there is false misdirected regeneration of nerve fiber will stimulate sweat glands next question is acute pancreatitis is due to viral disease alcoholism hepatitis none let's say a little easy questions acute pancreatitis is due to alcoholism a 7 year old boy presents with a right sided hemangioma and left sided focal seizures the most likely diagnosis is so the symptoms is sign is right sided hemangioma and left sided focal seizures and the options are sturge weber syndrome hypermelanosis incontinentia pigmenti neurofibromatosis answer is sturge weber disease the uh, signs of sturge sturge weber disease is the one sided hemangioma tram line reduposity in the skull and the opposite side focal seizure is the clinical representation of sturge weber syndrome sturge weber disease you can see the hemangioma involving one side of face and tram line reduposity in the skull next question is the easiest tooth movements in orthodontics i leave you this questions for you guys you have to answer it in the comment box i want to know what is the answer is it extrusion or is it tipping okay thank you very much for patience hearing see you in the next video bye